something I didn't know about you. <laughs> there, we're recording. <laughs> oh, thank you for that laugh. <laughs> okay, so today, today is Wednesday, June 16th, 2021. We are here again. Uh, I am Margaret Major. I am a registered counseling therapist here at the After Trauma Empowerment Network in Shubenacity, Nova Scotia. I'm joined with Vida Woodworth, who is co-founder and chairperson of our board of directors here at ATTEND. And I'm also joined with Kate Matthews, who is our technical director. She kind of keeps control of everything for us. And she's also on the board of directors as well. So thank you for being here with us. Um, today, um, we're gonna talk about mental illness, mental health and stigma. It's, it's quite a vast topic. So we're just gonna look at some of the myths that are out there around mental illness and um, just talk about stigma a little bit. And um, very importantly, we are going to show the 12 pieces of artwork that we have uh, chosen for our 2022 kindfulness calendar that we will be creating or producing um, later on this year, probably in the fall, we'll, we'll have those ready for sale. And that will be a fundraiser for attend for next year, like a great Christmas gift. Just, just saying, keep it decent shopping. <laughs> but before we start, um, I, as we always do, I'm going to do the diversity welcome. So I would like to welcome all women, men, transgender, and other identified individuals here today. I'd like to welcome everyone here who is a mother, father, sister, brother, auntie, uncle, cousin, son, daughter, grandmother, or grandfather. Welcome. I welcome people of all races, tribes, and descent. I welcome your bodies, your minds, and your energy. I welcome survivors and those who support them. I welcome all people single, married, partnered, dating, celibate, or involved in whatever sort of relationship is right for you. I welcome gay, lesbian, bisexual, heterosexual, queer, two-spirited, asexual, and others for whom none of the current labels fit. I welcome your emotions, your joy, your bliss, your hope, your rage, anger, frustration, sadness, and contentment. I welcome everyone's special way of understanding and knowing the world, whether it is education and wisdom that has been learned in school, colleges, and universities, and or the deep and profound school of life. I welcome your families, genetic, and otherwise, our networks of family and friends who make our lives easier, happier, and gentler to be. I welcome mystics, seekers, and believers of all kinds. I welcome people who identify as activists, community leaders, musicians, artists, and those who don't. And finally, I'd like to welcome the ancestors who lived in this land where we are now. Welcome the spirits of Mi'kmaq, the natives who lived in this land before the Europeans came. I'd like to acknowledge them and welcome them to this space. Everyone, welcome. And a big thank you for joining us. We, we greatly appreciate you being here, uh, joining in on the conversation. If you have any comments that you want to share, please type them in the chat box down below and we'll be happy to include that in our discussion. Uh, I had another thought and it just went away. Uh, thanks. Thank you to the Mental Health Foundation of Nova Scotia for providing funding for us for attend to be able to offer this 
this program. And uh, we, we are honored to do this every week. We look forward to it. We get quite excited. We even get silly in here sometimes <laughs> talking yeah. about, you know, what all the, I mean, we've got months left to do this and, and we're so excited about all the different things we can explore and talk about and bring awareness to and guests that we can have. We're going to be going for years with this part. Yes. Okay. So, Vida, let's do a check in with you. How are you? How are you on this Wednesday, the 16th? I am, I am good. Um, I got a big package in the mail yesterday, and I now have more superhero shirts, <laughs> t shirts to wear. Yay. So, tonight I'm sporting the Thor t shirt and a Wonder Woman hat. And um, anyway, I just thought I would go with that idea, at least for a, a while longer until my t-shirts run out. And then I'll have to come up with another theme to wear when I'm doing these podcasts. So, uh -huh. yeah, I don't you know what it would be. I enjoy your superhero shirt. I yes. enjoy your superhero theme. Yeah, we may have to start. Well, we're thinking of maybe making our own t-shirts in the near future. So maybe we'll have to create some superheroes. We definitely will. And I would be more than happy to wear those on our podcast. So yeah. Yeah. So no, I've had a, a good week. Uh, not as busy as the last couple have been. Uh, but good. I was able to go golfing again, which is always oh. a, a good thing. <laughs> Um, my score never changes, but uh, or all it does, it gets worse. <laughs> but it's a great way to uh, kind of let everything go and just have some laughs yeah. and uh, get some exercise. So, yeah, and I'm still following uh, mostly, I guess, on on Facebook and other places. The um, I think uh, last time we talked about pride, but the week before that we talked about uh, the discovery of the 215 yeah. children in Kamloops. And I see it's being reported uh, primarily on Facebook that they have found other graves in other provinces uh, at on the sites of other residential schools. So I'm just, I've been wondering all, all week, I guess, as I see the numbers climb, and I think you have it on the board behind you there. 535. Yeah. Uh, why it's not being talked about in the, in the, the news, like our mm -hmm. television channels. And I've gone from global to, to CTV to CBC, and I haven't heard them mention anything more about uh, finding more grave sites. Um, they do sometimes talk a little bit about the Kamloops um, 215 uh, children, but uh, they haven't mentioned any more that I know of. So I, I think this is something yeah. that needs to be as difficult as it is. It needs to be talked about and people need to Definitely. be made aware, um, you know, that this just wasn't something that happened in one place. Unfortunately, it, it probably and did happen probably at every location. So, yeah, and uh, no, it's just just kind of keeping track and that kind of stuff and uh, looking forward to doing our podcast tonight. So I can't think of anything too exciting. I do have a friend with me sitting you next do. to me. You do. I was yes, wondering is, when you were going to introduce your friend. This is, uh, we, we didn't have a name, but I guess we'll call the Raven Stigma for tonight. <laughs> um, this is a, a bit bigger puppet than we uh, showed a, a while ago. Um, but he's uh, quite friendly and uh, um, provides me with a lot of fun and excitement <laughs> sometimes. So uh, anyway, he's sitting in here with me tonight as we are doing our podcast. And uh, there's a few more there, but we'll save their introductions for the future. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. They may come on when we do this. Yeah, yeah. And, and we did we did have a, a comment Um I think it's in, in regards to what you were saying about 535 and it not being yes. reported. Wow, that is stunning. Yes, it must be talked about and the truth uncovered and told to the world. Yeah. It is, it is. Yeah. And, and yeah, those, those yeah. numbers are unfortunately and sadly going to continue to rise. Yeah. And I've heard some people say, oh, it's so hard watching the news and hearing about 
you know, the sadness and, and I think we forget, um, yes, it is hard, but uh, to live with what our Indigenous peoples have had to live with since uh, the settlers have come to yeah. this land um, is many, many times more difficult. And I, not that I think we should have to pay, but it is only a small bit of what many people have gone through especially mm -hmm. the children and people who went to residential schools or who were in the, in the, the day schools or, or who were part of the 60s scoop and who today are still in the child's, uh, what's supposed to be the child protection system. Yeah. And we know that uh, the numbers show that uh, the percentage of children who are in care are uh, the numbers are so much higher for Indigenous children than they are for other children. And it would be one thing if their treatment was good, but we're sorry to say that that isn't always the case. So it is stuff that happened 100 years ago or 200 years ago or whatever, but it's still happening today. Mm -hmm. And as long as it happens, we have to keep talking about it and we have to keep trying to make it different and uh, stop, you know, using that, oh, I don't need to feel guilty for something that happened that long time ago, I wasn't there. And no, you don't have to feel guilty, but you still have to be responsible. We are all responsible to make a change and to make it different and make it so that it doesn't happen again. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so yeah. anyway, that's still, I guess, a big part of, of what I think about. Um, and try as much as I can and, and as one person can to make a difference. So, yeah. Yeah. I think yeah, that's... We, could, we could stay, you know, we could yeah. the next year of sessions just talking about and raising awareness about, yeah. about this topic. Yeah. And we'll, we'll definitely, I mean, as, as these explorations continue to happen across our country, um, we'll continue to follow that. and stay updated and, and keep having conversations and raising awareness so yeah yeah okay so um i had a parrot video i really wanted to show everybody and i saved it somewhere and i can't find it <laughs> so <laughs> um maybe next week we can show uh the parrot video oh oh <laughs> Uh, yes, Kate just rushed by me because she had a bug on her. I can appreciate, you know, <laughs> not wanting a bug on you. <laughs> okay, let me put these papers over here. So I think maybe, Vida, if it's okay with you, let's, mm -hmm. let's uh, just talk about stigma for a few minutes. And then we'll, we'll show the pieces of art. Okay. Does that work for you or do you want to do it in a reverse order? No, that sounds good to me. Okay. Yeah. So stigma, stigma is, and, and we were talking about stigma before we started the show and, and we were trying to, it, it's like creativity. It's a really challenging term to apply so that it embraces everything about that word. So stigma, the definition that we're going to use um, is a mark of shame, disgrace, or disapproval from others because of a mental illness or mental health condition that you have. That is a short, short definition of stigma. There's, just briefly, there's social I guess maybe it would be slash public, would we include that stigma? Mm -hmm. Which is when you are um, believed to be or treated in a way because of mental health issues that you have. And see stigma, we could apply stigma to, I mean, anybody in any group or population could be stigmatized. We're specifically focusing today on mental illness. Um, there is still a lot of stigma out there about mental illness. And even 
So with public or social stigma, that's when you are treated differently by other people or viewed differently by other people because of a mental health issue or mental illness. Self-stigma is when, when you see yourself differently and you treat yourself differently because you have stigma towards yourself. That's self-stigma. So uh, Vida has a list with, with a few myths on there that exist out in our world about mental mental illness and there's there's a lot of them out there so we just wanted to just discuss a few of those myths i don't know if we'll get through them all just so we you know don't run out of time in showing our pictures but um what's what's one of the the myths on there that you would like to share about well <clears throat> There are 10, and the first one is one that I think a lot of people experience. Uh, uh, they experience the fact that a lot of people still believe this myth, and that is uh, mental illnesses aren't real illnesses. And um, yeah, how many times have we heard someone say, <coughs> if I had a broken leg or if I had cancer, people wouldn't expect me to you know be able to come to work whereas because it's a mental illness they think i you know it's not really real um and so uh, the words we use to describe mental illnesses have changed greatly over time what hasn't changed is the fact that mental illnesses are not the regular ups and downs of life so when someone has a mental illness it isn't just that they're feeling a bit sad one day or you know, having a struggle. Mental illnesses create stress. They don't go away on their own. And real health problem, they are real health problems with effective treatments. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, uh, I've heard it said by many people, and I probably said those words myself uh, years ago when I didn't really understand what mental illness was. And uh, once you understand. Um, it a bit better. I think it helps to realize that they are in fact illnesses and uh, they affect your brain and how your brain functions. And for someone who struggles or who, who has a mental illness, it is every bit as real as any other kind of an illness. Yeah. 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 Was there anything you wanted to add to that, Margaret? Well, or? When, when you made a, a comment about how years ago, you may have made some of those comments. Those, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, even even myself, I can I can remember back um, to just being ignorant to mm -hmm. information and the facts. And, yeah. and you know, yeah, that's all in your head. You just need to yeah. do this, and and it'll be all better. It'll go away. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I. I strive to continue to learn and educate myself because we're learning more and more as well about this. And, and stigma, there's still a substantial amount of stigma out there in the world. Oh, we lost you, Vida. I, I disappeared you again. I'm back. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, striving just to, to educate myself as much as I can. Yeah. yeah. And, and yes, mental illness is real. It's real. It affects, well, they estimate one out of five Canadians will experience a mental health issue or episode in their lifetime. I believe that it's five out of five that are affected. Yeah. Because if you love and care for someone who has a mental illness, mental health condition, it affects you. It affects your yes. life. It, so to me mental health it's almost the same as as when i talk about sexualized violence or trauma in that way it's something that ultimately affects everyone yes. whether directly or because of somebody that you know and yeah yeah and i could keep going by that but i won't i know it's it's each one of them we could probably talk for quite a while yeah. uh the second myth is uh is a a good one in the sense, uh, again, I have personal experience. Mental illness will never affect me. Uh, a lot of hmm, times it's easy to think, you know, if I haven't 
experienced something personally uh, that is a mental illness and, you know, I'm a strong person and I can get through anything um, that it will never affect me. But it also, you just mentioned, if you have a friend, family member, or someone you care about, a coworker who is mm-hmm. affected by a mental health issue or a mental illness, it does affect you. And uh, no one is immune to mental illness. And, um, you know, uh, I probably, as I've gotten older, have learned a lot more. And uh, I realize now that there are times in my life where I probably would would have or was affected by a mental health issue. Um, it says all of us will be affected by mental illnesses. Researchers estimate that, estimate that one in five Canadians will experience a mental illness at some point <coughs> in their life. And as you said, Margaret, it could be five and five if you add in all the people who are connected to that one person. Yeah. You may not experience a mental illness yourself, but it's very likely that a family member, friend or coworker will. So yeah. just exactly what I was saying. And uh, yeah, it most certainly does affect us all. Yeah. And uh, whether we have it or someone else does. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and just... I myself, there was two points that you made. Um, how no one is immune to mental health or mental illness. Um, I mean, there's there's steps and care that we can take with ourselves um, to reduce the likelihood. But there's genetics, there's brain, brain chemistry, there's so many, you know, mental health is, is simple, but it's complex at the same time. Yeah. And... I mean, me being a registered counseling therapist, I think that there's these ideas that because of the work that I do, that somehow I've got, and I'm just going to be quite frank about this, (laughs) somehow I've got all my shit together and there's nothing wrong with me. And that's not true. Um, Therapists, uh, people just like everybody else, I have anxiety on a daily basis. And I, I put practices into place to help reduce my anxiety. I've had mental, mental illness episodes in my life. Uh, in my family, friends, uh, coworkers, it's, yeah. And, and I just wanted to say that about, I think there's a pressure on some healthcare providers, whether it be therapy or uh, doctors, nurses, anybody in the, the healthcare field, that somehow they're not immune, but they're less likely to experience mental illness or mental health issues. And that's not true. Yeah. 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 They're they're humans too. And and we need to be able to allow space for support for all people, all people. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, are we ready? Number three. Mental illnesses are just an excuse for poor behavior. Hmm. 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 Well, it's true that some people who experience mental illnesses may act in ways that are not, that are unexpected or seem strange to others. We need to remember that the illnesses, not the person, are behind these behaviors. No one chooses to experience a mental illness. So yes, sometimes uh, because of a mental illness, people do do things that maybe we think they shouldn't do or, you know, should should know better. Um, But again, how that mental illness uh, affects that person um, is is what's causing that behavior. And uh, it's it's really important that we understand that because it's so easy to blame it on the person and say, well, you know, they always act weird. So I don't want to be around them or whatever. Um, And that isn't helpful to them. And it really isn't helpful for you uh, to act, you know, to make that choice. So um, yeah, we have to remember that uh, it's the illness that's, that's acting, not the person. Yeah. Yeah. Number four, bad parenting causes mental illness. Oh, oh my. 
Wow. Okay. Well, no <laughs> one factor can cause mental illness. Mental illnesses are complicated conditions that arise from a combination of genetics, biology, environment, and life experiences. Yes. Family members and loved ones do have a big role in the support and recovery. So um, I guess sometimes people are trying to find a cause or a reason why someone is the way they are. And parents tend to get blamed for a lot of things, I find. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's all my mother's fault or it's all my parents' fault. Uh, but again, sometimes uh, there are things that are beyond um, control you know it's something genetic or it's something you were born with or it's because of a, a life experience and um you know it's it's really it's really out of your parents control in many ways um so if your parents are are uh, uh, you know supportive and loving and kind um someone who in the family has a mental illness may have a, a much different experience and maybe more successful uh, in, in managing that or in their recovery than if they have a family who denies it or blames the person for yeah. having the mental illness. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's, that's, that made me think of the first myth. Um, yes. That you read. Yeah. Because it's, it's like if you um, genetically inherit something from your, from your family, like your parents um it, it's i mean i see how some people could go yeah it's their fault but it's not their fault it's genetics no. yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. yeah 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 i mean there are some things that we know now that you can have tests for to see if you are a carrier of something but uh, it would be very difficult at this point i think to be able to do testing to uh, you know, to to um, estimate or to guess at how how more how much more likely it is that somebody could be born to a parent who has uh, mental illness or who has a grandparent or so on. So, yeah, um, yeah it's not uh, it's not your parents' fault. Um, no, for that. Number five. This is a hot one, I think. People with mental illnesses are violent and dangerous. Mm -hmm. huh. um, I'm thinking right now back to uh, the former president, Donald Trump, and some of the mass shooting uh, situations that happened and his, uh, his propensity to promote the idea that the people who were committing these offenses were mentally ill mm -hmm. and that it was only mentally ill people who would commit this kind of an act, um, which only makes it harder for people who live with mental illness because people will then look at them and say, oh my, you have a mental illness and you know, I'm afraid of you because you may become violent or angry. Right. Um, right. The, the reality is some people try to predict violence so they know what to avoid. Uh, however, the causes of violence are complicated and researchers agree that mental illnesses are not a good predictor of violence. In fact, if we look at mental illnesses on their own, people who experience a mental illness are no more violent than people without mental illness. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a lot more than just the fact that the person has or doesn't have a mental illness. And uh, yeah, when we hear any case automatically before we even know who the shooter was or who the person who was violent was, we'll go, oh yeah, they must be mentally ill. Mm -hmm. And that isn't always the case. And uh, yeah, so it, yeah. it makes it really difficult for people who have mental illness. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Number six, people don't recover from mental illnesses. Hmm. Well, that if that were true, it would be pretty scary, I would think. Um, people uh, can and do recover from mental illnesses. Today, there are many different kinds of treatment services and supports that can help, and no one should expect or to feel unwell forever. 
The fact is people who experience mental illnesses can and do lead productive, engaged lives. Absolutely. Yeah, and we see more and more people publicly talking about the fact that they have mental illness and uh, Olympic athletes, uh, professionals, doctors, nurses, police officers, firefighters, teachers, um, you name it, people yeah. who work in a grocery store, uh, people who drive trucks. It, it's something that can affect everyone or anyone, uh, but it doesn't mean that you still can't have a career in something that you really want to to be in. The, the, the important thing is that you uh, do the best to stay as healthy as you can. And, uh, you know, and a lot of people who live with mental illness learn many tools to use um, if they feel that they maybe are, are not as well as they would normally be. But it doesn't mean it's not like a, it's a life sentence if you have mental illness that you can never do this thing that you want it to do. Yeah. yeah. Number seven, people who experience mental illnesses are weak and can't handle stress. Mm -hmm. hmm. I think sometimes uh, having, a, you know, not just one, but several family members that I've watched who live with, with mental illness, sometimes I think there's, that they're actually stronger than the average person because this, the, the, what they have to endure um, every day from, you know, the things that people think about them, how they feel, all of the, you know, the myths and things that affect their day-to-day -day life, I think sometimes that in fact they are, are stronger than we than than everyone believes they are. Yeah. Um, stress impacts our well-being, but this is true for everyone. People who experience mental illnesses may actually be a, better at managing stress than people who haven't experienced mental illness. So, you know, that whole thing that they're weak isn't isn't true. Number eight, people who experience mental illnesses can't work. And I think I kind of answered that earlier. Um, yes, they can work. There may be times uh, where it is more difficult. Yeah. There may be times, just like with any illness, that you may need to take some time to, uh, to get better. Um, but absolutely, people with mental illnesses can work. And our workplaces are filled with people who have mental illness. And um, because we still expect them to act different, look different, or be different, we sometimes think that they're not there, but they are. And again, that's, you know, we're buying into those myths if we're thinking that that's what's going to happen. Yeah. And, yeah. Then, and then just to add to that, Pida, um, if, if somebody treats somebody, differently because of a mental illness like like mm -hmm. if, if someone isn't offered a job because you have a mental illness we're not offering you a position here yeah that's discrimination absolutely yes yeah and it's it's actually illegal to discriminate against someone based on a mental illness um, that doesn't mean that it doesn't happen uh, it most certainly does, sadly. Um, but, um, you know, it's not, it's not okay to do that, you know, to say, okay, well, no. we can't, uh, can't let that person have this job um, because of their mental illness. Yeah. Yeah. We've got two more to go okay. here. Kids can't have a mental illness like depression because that's an adult problem. Hmm. Huh. Well, children can experience mental illnesses, and in fact, many mental illnesses first appear when a person is young. Mental illnesses may look different in children than in adults, but they are a real concern, and they can impact the way that young children learn and build skills, which, they can, which can lead to challenges in the future. Unfortunately, many children don't receive the help they need. And... Uh, I'm a firm believer. I used to, I, I was a teacher for a while. And I think that the, from the very day that a child walks in the door of a school, we should teach them um, things like how to cope when you're stressed, uh, you know, that it's okay if you're feeling 
sad or whatever and and that we continue to build on those kinds of skills so that when by the time they're finished school they have a toolbox filled with healthy ways to cope Um, whether it's uh, a mental illness that's an ongoing illness for them or maybe it's just uh, something that happens because of certain situations Um, uh, and you know teaching things like yoga and uh, going outside and, and learning to appreciate nature and walking and you know I think are every bit as important as teaching how to play basketball and what the, the rules are for volleyball um, those are you know these are skills we can give to each person um, that they can take with them for life that uh, may become very important later on if something were to come you know, perhaps uh, some of the symptoms of a mental illness become unmanageable, then they have that toolbox filled with healthy things and maybe less likely to turn to some of the unhealthy ways to cope that we do when we're struggling. So, yeah. I'll sign that, Vida. If you have a you have a piece of paper or you want to try to implement that in our school systems. I know, I, I know. I'll sign would, that for you. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, we're missing the boat on that one, I think, in the school because it would be... It would be wonderful to be a teacher teaching those things because Mm -hmm. you would benefit from them as well. Yes, Um, we all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The last one, everyone gets depressed as they grow older. It's just a part of the aging process. Hmm. Wow. I'm going to be 60 in September. So if this is true, (laughs) (laughs) wow. (laughs) Um, I don't know. I don't think I've even heard that one before. Oh, well, depression is never an inevitable part of aging. Older adults may have a greater risk of depression because they may experience so many changes in the roles and their social networks. If an older adult experiences depression, they need the same support as anyone else. But it's not inevitable. I think uh, many people, wow, I think of my uh, old phys ed teacher, and I wouldn't say her age on here, but... um, she uh, goes running in the morning. She plays 18 holes of golf, throws in a round of pickleball, and then goes home and knits hats for babies at the IWK, oh. bakes some cookies. And, you know, and, and she seems to do more every year. She gets older. So, uh, and I've <laughs> talked to her and, you know, she is most certainly not depressed. I'm sure she's had times, um, you know, and she's someone who would probably tell me if she was. But, you know, I think it, again, is as people get older, sometimes they are more isolated. And uh, with COVID, especially, we've seen, you know, a a real concern with our aging population and with our younger population. We don't have those social interactions and those, you know, activities and events that we used to go to and participate in to help us, you know, keep our moods up. Yeah. Um, Yeah. But it isn't, you know inevitable once you get to a certain age that you're just going to get depressed um if that I would think if that were the case we wouldn't have very many old people you know because they probably would not survive um yeah no that's another myth I think and again very much uh I think if you're young and you think, oh, well, I'm not an old person, so I'm not depressed. Um, it's, it's that trying to pretend it can't happen to me thing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, those are 10 myths and I'm and, sure there yeah. are a million more. There are. And, uh, but anyway, yeah, good, yeah. To, good to think about. They are, they are just myths. And, uh, you know, if somebody looks at you and says, oh, well, you know, you have depression, you can never get a job. Um, or you'll not, never get better. Yeah, or you'll never get better. You're always going to be depressed. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that would be very sad. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And, and I think that um, while this is an incredibly important topic, I do want to get to the, yes. the pictures. We have about 20 minutes left. And I still want to okay. my little guided meditation before the end. So um, I just need to ask for patience from from people participating because uh, this is kind of different for me to bring up these, because I think I have to do it separately. Now. 
Is it just showing the one picture? No, it's showing your screen. I see your laptop screen. Oh, that. Okay. Okay. Now I okay. see you. Bear with me for a minute. <laughs> yeah. Maybe maybe you can tell a nice joke or something. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I just need to. What kind here. of a bagel flies? Oh my. <laughs> I a plain do a plain bagel. <laughs> I heard that on the social today. <laughs> Good one. Yes. That, that's probably the only joke that I could tell on air. So <laughs> okay. All right. So let me try this again. Okay. Here now, we go. Now is it is it just the picture? Yes, it is. Okay. Excellent. Ooh. Okay. So yes, this this beauty, um, this is just happens to be first first in the file folder on the computer. Um, this isn't necessarily the order that these will appear in the calendar. And we're also going to have a professional photographer um, take pictures of the pieces that were submitted. So these these are kind of scanned and um, the calendar will be a lot uh, better quality than probably what we're able to see on the screen right now. So this piece was submitted by Patty, and you might have to pronounce this, Bert Wangler? Bert Wangler. Bert Wangler. Yep. And this is called Forgotten. Just, Some beautiful I just, colors. I just love the colors. Um, they're they're just so bright and it, it, it to me it's almost like this needs to go with like a spring month like april or something just uh, mm. and then the mm. title even forgotten i mean with with any piece of art it's, it's open for your own subjective interpretation of course because what by the sees it might be different than what i see but um i just love i it. think the colors are the most striking yeah to me and uh they're so bold they're just bold. yeah mm -hmm. the shapes and i see you know I, mean, I i could describe it on and on but i see i guess uh someone peeking out uh you know when you hear the title forgotten maybe wondering if anybody notices them yeah 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 that would be yeah now i'm gonna is that on the screen a new one? Nope, same one. Okay. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Now this cool. one did not have a title. Um, this was submitted by Elisa, Elisa Seymour. Oh, thank you, Kate. Kate's hooking me up here with her technical direction. <laughs> <laughs> And yes, like we, don't, we don't have a title for this one. I, I like the previous one that we just showed, love the bright, the brightness, the colors. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just, yeah. Most and then, like, in a way. yeah. And then you see that the person, I think, and you can't really say if they're facing you with their hair hanging no. down or if they have their back turned to you. I know. Um, but I, yeah. 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 I like very much. Okay, now. <clears throat> okay. Now this one, this is a photograph of the actual piece that was submitted, and it actually looks the way I want it to on Kate's computer. My computer is so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but this this was submitted by margo johnson and it's called a little blue and on the outside i'm pointing up the screen but no you can see it. <laughs> <laughs> around here and you can't really see it on my computer but maybe on yours you can there's this beautiful beautiful hint of, of a, a sky baby blue in there and it's so beautiful and I just I just 
I could just look at this like you just kind of get lost in it there's all kinds mm. of yeah it's, it's it, just, I, I, it yeah. makes me think of looking through ice and, ice that's a cool one yeah yeah and the bubbles sometimes that you can see and yeah things and also looking into not a human eye but a, an eye yeah all kinds of oh, things yeah oh, yeah yeah I know. there's so many things here yeah you know. but i do see the little bit of blue that's for sure yeah okay good. yeah i can good. see that because that's really important that we capture that that yeah the, the, a little blue in there to go yeah you know in the town yeah and i'm thinking of what sometimes people used to say you know how are you feeling oh, a little blue today yeah hmm. yeah yeah let me get this one set up. Okay. Oh, this one. I love this yes. one. I love yes. them all. I know. I know. I do too. I can't wait to see these all put together in a calendar. Yeah. They're hanging in our office. Yes. So this piece was submitted by Danielle Laforte, and this is called String. And um, to me, this. I guess for me personally, um, when I look at this, I look at, to me, it's almost like a visual representation of the strength that is required in myself sometimes to come through a difficult situation or uh, just, just, you know, dealing with loss mm -hmm. or grief or yeah. change, transition. Yeah. That's, that's what I see in it. That's just yeah. me. But, um, yeah. I see a lot of... Boldness. Yeah, a lot of movement. Um, I yeah. can see people dancing around Ooh. in a kind of around, a, I don't know, a fire or around something. And, you know, the colors, oh, the cool. darkness into light. Um, what a yeah, almost like, by yeah, that's the strength of a, even like a fire and how it can destroy or, you know, it can actually help create things yeah. uh, and bring new life. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. It's very powerful. Oh, I love this one too. I like them all. I know. I know. <laughs> and this one does not have a title either. Um, this was uh, submitted by Amanda Bend. And I just love the peacefulness of this, the colors, the way they're blended together so gently and just, yeah, just peaceful. It just seems, yeah, peaceful. the strength, strength of the roots mm -hmm. kind of holding on and the, the delicateness of the, I don't know if they're flowers or leaves or petals or, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. And kind of reaching outward. Yeah, yeah. It's almost breeziness. Breezy yeah. Breezy yeah. Yeah. I'll call it that. Breezy. Okay. Now, let me share. Look at me getting the hang of that. Oh, wow. Isn't this, isn't this deep? Is that a picture, a painting? Or? So, this was submitted by Kevin Sibley. This is a photograph that he took one early one morning and it did have it does have some editing on it to just okay deepen it um it to me there's a couple of uh, the depth is is what strikes me first when i look at this is the depth of it mm -hmm. and then it's almost like the um the light behind the dark I remember a few sessions ago, I had shown a, a painting that a client had done several years ago about kind of coming, coming out of the dark and going mm -hmm. into the light. Yeah. And that's, that's my interpretation of this piece, especially is, is just the, there is the light behind the dark. It's yeah. there and it's kind bright. of bad to, and I just, yeah. just need to clarify the, the title. Dark cloud, bright sky. It's the title of this one. Yeah. 
Yeah. No, it's um, beautiful. It is. It is. Okay, let's get one more. How are we doing for time? We're doing okay. It's always quarter after four in here. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Who won't change that battery in that bus fire? <laughs> Maybe I should bring a battery <laughs> next week. <laughs> and and we need a light bulb for that lamp over there. Yes. Yes. So this this lovely piece was donated by Lynn Smith, and it's called Just Breathe. And uh, Lynn painted this for us. And um, it's, to me, uh, it's it's almost like taking a breath. Just, yeah. Just seeing the word breathe, it's just like. Yeah, and the colors. I lo I love the blue color and uh, and yeah. just that reminder. Sometimes just to breathe will make a big difference because your brain doesn't have enough oxygen if you forget. Oh, and uh, yeah, sometimes well, I, just having yeah. having oxygen makes things a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I mean, like that. Breathing is is our one of our most important coping mechanisms. Is, yeah, is for breath. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I like that. Yeah, yeah it's be... it's it's very simple yet very yeah. important. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh my. I'm pretty sure I made mispronounced this last name, and I do not mean any disrespect by mispronouncing a person's last name. Oh, okay. Cool. I know. Isn't it just comfy? Yeah. Like it's just. And, and, and yeah. this, my body is my home is the title and the person who submitted this let me just find it's Caitlin Kegler Schro Kegler Schro Tro yeah yeah it's, I'm sorry I have mispronounced your last name I'm I apologize um but this this piece um what I love this it's yeah comfort to me this yeah this, this person in this piece looks so comfortable yeah in their body and, and okay you know I'm okay this is my home yeah and whatever it looks like it's my home yeah yeah it's, it's beautiful yeah yeah, and the pastels make it, uh, you know, that feeling gives soft. that same feeling. Yeah. Comfort, soft, soft. And yeah, warm, comfy, yeah, cozy. Yeah. So this one, we're getting through, Vida. We're getting through. Yeah, I'm really starting to appreciate taking my art all through high school. Yeah, I. Yeah. Uh, Okay. Oh, this is beautiful too. So this is called The Release, and this was submitted by Bob Richards. To me, this is this reminds me of the, or it doesn't remind me, it gives me the same type of feeling as the just breathe one. It's almost like the release, let it go. Just yeah, you know, release. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it reminds me uh, when uh I when I got married uh, to Jane, uh, one of the things we had hoped to do as part of our uh, uh, wedding ceremony was she had ordered uh, Japanese lanterns, paper lanterns, and we were going to light them and release them with good wishes. And then we found out that we were in the flight path of the airport and we could cause an airline crash oh. so we didn't oh. get to do it but no. <laughs> um and these these lanterns that we had gotten were white but uh you know when the when the the fire is lit you know it changed them to uh not as deep a red as this but uh yeah. more of an amber color but just to see you know people releasing that to the sky and and letting it go yeah 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 this just to me just it, I just bring it differently looking at this yeah yeah it's, it's a release for me to look at okay so this piece 
Days that are lonely and gray don't last forever. Birds know this, and this is that is why they sing. Uh -huh. So this piece was submitted by Paula Arsenal. Um, I just love the message in it. And, mm. and, and this is, I'm not sure what you would call this artwork because it's, it's different mediums put together. Like there's, mm -hmm. marker, there's pages. I'm not sure what that song, if it's yeah. a particular song that she used on that, that piece or uh, I don't know, but uh, yeah. I'd love the, the different textures and materials that were used. Yeah. yeah, the little bird. My grandmother used to draw pictures on the backs of flyers that came in the mail when we were growing up. And her birds didn't look exactly like this, but they looked very similar. Did they? And uh, my sister especially used to sit at the kitchen table with her and they would draw pictures and, and talk and probably eat cookies and things. And uh, yeah, it just is comforting to me just because I think it reminds me of her. Oh. Yeah. They all, all of these submissions have such a great, and I mean, that's kind of what we were looking for was hope and encouragement. And all yeah. of these just have, they just have warmth. They have just positivity yeah. with them. Okay, this little girl. There we go. Oh. So this right. was actually the first, the very first submission that we received. This is from Patrick McWade. Uh, so this little fella, uh, according to when he submitted it, this little guy was out in the woods taking a stroll and he happened upon this song. Write, dance, laugh, and love. What more can you want? <laughs> yeah. 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 I love this. Yeah. You know, so many people have told me over the years how much, I guess, journaling and writing has helped them in their healing journey, yeah. you know, so, and, uh, you know, it's, it's not about writing perfect sentences and having perfect spelling and grammar. It's just allowing the process of getting it out yeah. to happen. And then the freedom after that, maybe dancing and awesome. laughing and, and love. Yes. Very oh, neat. Dancing. I cannot see yeah. Yeah. Okay, one more. I just realized, Margaret, I sound like those ladies on Saturday Night Live. What do you mean by that? They, I'm like <laughs> all whispery in my voice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they do skits that make fun of like they're they cook and bake and they're always going yes and we put in so many raisins oh, and yeah. they wear cardigans and stuff oh. and i thought oh no i sound just like them yeah i have a Sorry. cardigan on that's me <laughs> me either it's too warm for a cardigan <laughs> okay so this is our last one huh. this is from ben Mosier. Um, I just, I, I love the, yeah. the message in this. This applies to everybody. If you are a human being, you have to try, try, and try again. Yeah, and keep trying. Yeah. Yeah. And I just, like, to me, the, the determination, the commitment in this. Yeah. The message. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's, those are our 12 our 12 pieces for our, our very first uh, kindfulness calendar. Yeah, I'm so I love excited. Them. I'm so glad we can buy them all together in a calendar. I know. Because <laughs> I love I, every I can't piece. wait to see the finished, like an actual calendar. Like, yeah. Yeah. And, and I just want to say um, how much it means to us, how grateful we are that all these artists, took the time to to do this to yes. do the work to go to the effort to send it to us to submit it um we're very grateful we we yeah. just so appreciate yeah appreciate that that's support yeah. we consider it support yes yeah no they're all wonderful and, and i'm sure as they had different meanings to us they will for anybody who sees yeah. them so yeah 
Yeah. Okay. There. Now we're at 7.01. Ooh. Woo. Over time again. I know. Why not? What are we going to do? We'll have to put a ding dong timer or something and it will <laughs> automatically go off. At yes. Yeah. Yes. So I need my, my guided meditation script. Okay. So um, next week, uh, because this is um, PTSD Awareness Month, as well as uh, there's lots of other Pride Month, Pride and, month. and uh, it's actually the 21st is Indigenous, Kate, tell me what it is. Indigenous History Month. The month or day? But there's a day. What's the 27th? The 21st. It's the usually 21st. on summer solstice around there. Yeah, it's Indigenous Day, I think. It, it's just yeah. a day. Okay. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry. I can't. It just went right out of my head. Yeah, me too. Yeah. It's not even coming. So we're going we're gonna to talk about PTSD next week. Um, yeah. And I'm not sure who's joining us as a guest yet. We haven't got uh, confirmation back on that. So we won't share that yet. Um, but thank you for, for spending your you're not going to say Saturday evening with us. It's, Saturday. <laughs> it's not a hockey game. <laughs> You're still thinking hockey night in Canada. I still wish for the Leafs. <laughs> Gotta let that go. Man. The release. The release. Let it go. <laughs> yes. I'll probably, are the Habs playing tonight? Yes, they are. Okay. I'll watch the Habs. They're, they're the second team that I'll root for. I know. Yeah. They're Canadian. We're gonna do they need help. <laughs> you know I think they're in over their heads now. Are they? Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. Yes, Kate's, Kate's confirming what you just said. Ida. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, for the next couple of minutes, I'm just going to do a short, short version of the loving kindness meditation for our ending so for the next couple of minutes you don't have to do anything except just just listen to my voice put all your stresses and worries and your to do's up on the shelf just for the next few minutes and you can pick them back down when you're done and you don't need to control your breathing in any way if you're comfortable closing your eyes, please do so. If you're not comfortable closing your eyes, just find something to fix your skin. You may notice that your breathing will naturally slow down. Just allow yourself to be in this space, in this here and now. Hearing the sounds in the space around you. Begin to feel any tension you may be holding start to drain away from you. Feel any tension drain away from your eyes, your face, through your neck, your shoulders, and down your arms. Feel any tension drain like a liquid down through your body and out through your toes. Now begin to feel your body fill up with love. Imagine a loving white light entering your feet, traveling up through your body, up to your stomach, your chest, and your arms. Feel it almost bursting through your heart fingers through the crown of your head. When you feel embraced in that love, silently repeat the following words to yourself. May I be free from all harm. 
may I be safe and protected. May I be free from all suffering. May I be happy. May I be free from all disease and physical pain. May I be healthy and strong. And may I be able to live in this world peacefully, happily, joyfully, and with ease. Now turn your thoughts to this vast world, the earth with all its living creatures. Continue to feel that love bursting through your body as you silently say, may all beings be free from all harm. May all beings be safe and protected. May all beings be free from all suffering. May all beings be happy. May all beings be free from all disease and physical pain. May all beings be healthy and strong. And may all beings be able to live in this world happily, peacefully, joyfully, and with ease. Send your love as far out around the world as possible. And just imagine that energy traveling through the air. Feel that love centered around your heart. Feel yourself in this present moment, feeling the weight of your feet on the floor or your body on the surface you're laying on. Carry this feeling with you through the rest of your day, reconnecting with it when you need to. And when you are ready, you may slowly open your eyes. There. We didn't have the Hollywood light shining on you this time, Lida. No. It just didn't seem like, like, you know. Wasn't the same. It wasn't. For the past few yeah. weeks, we've had that Hollywood light shine on you. For our yeah. Conversation. Must be that big cloud still out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Okay. So do you have any closing, any closing words Lida, before we sign off? No, just everyone have a, a good week and uh, look forward to next week. And uh, talking about post-traumatic stress is very close to my heart. Um, I've, yeah, and ex I've experienced it myself. And, uh, and it's something I think we need, again, to talk a lot more about. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, thank you, um, Emmett and Kevin, for joining us. We appreciate you being here and you with us. And um, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and we will see you next week. We will. We will. Bye bye. <laughs>